This is the e-learning podcast, episode number 44. Looking at one course for the law firm and looking at another different course for Five Star Counsel. And both of them are aimed at how can I get some information to people who want to help themselves, access some of what I know. I can give them a lot of what I know, but they're miss, you know, the, the piece they're missing out on is I'm not going to be right there to say, turn this particular screw this way, but I can say, when you see this screw, you want to turn it this way. Welcome to the e-learning podcast from LMSPulse.com. My name is Stephen Laddick, and I'm the director at LMS Pulse. My guest for today is John Strohmeyer. John is the founder of Strohmeyer Law, which is a tax, estate planning, and probate service provider. But John is also the founder of Five Star Council, which is a podcast and blog about customer care with a special focus on delivering professional services. Now, you might be asking, if you've been listening for a while, why is there a lawyer on the e-learning podcast? Well, John is convinced that given the shifts happening in the legal profession, he needs to evolve in the way he serves people. As he tackles the development of valuable and helpful e-learning experiences in a way that reflect his professional experience, John joins the show to talk about the service factor when developing and selling an online course. In this super legit conversation, John and I talk about his formative time as a night shift manager at the Four Seasons and how it influenced his approach to service in the legal profession. We also talk about why John thinks jumping into online course creation as a professional attorney makes perfect sense given the shifts taking place in the profession and the need for a place for lawyers to learn and discuss topics related to service. We also talk about how the limits of investing in service can vary widely among professions. Or would you pick a lawyer or accountant because of their high-end courtesy drinks? Finally, we talk about general details on John's process, and we talk about his platform selection, his pricing, and his promotion, and all the lessons that he's learned thus far in building out his courses. A little spoiler alert, it's work, work, and more work. But before we get started, a quick word from our sponsors. The eLearning Podcast is sponsored by the eLearning Success Summit. Learn from more than 40 experts how to teach, work, and learn online without being overwhelmed. Get your free ticket to the summit at elearningsuccesssummit.com and lmspulse.com, your best source for news, information, and resources for e-learning professionals for more than 10 years. Get our free roundup of the week's top news at lmspulse.com. Hello, John. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Stephen. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. I, you know, we had some fun on your podcast a while ago. I have no idea when that episode's coming out. Maybe it'll be concurrent with this one, but we can talk about that in a second. So I, I needed to have you on the show because you have a story that needs to be told. Uh, before we dive in there, though, there's a question I've been asking everyone as we start off. How's your COVID? How's it going? Where are you sitting and, and kind of how's, it, how's your COVID going? Um, I mean, it, it seemed to be doing all right, all things considered. You know, a little bit of the kind of the crazy shut-ins. But we, I mean, I'm, right now I'm sitting at home. I was lucky enough to have built my law firm as kind of remote first from mm -hmm. the get-go. So last March, really all I had to do was go to my physical office, pick up my desktop and bring it home. Mm -hmm. And everything just kept on going. My paralegal works in a different city. My associate attorney works down the street, but he and I have been on Zoom and doing things remotely for a while. So it was a tweak, but you know, ultimately my wife and I are working from home right now, more or less things have, you know, we feel like we've been very lucky. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great to hear. I, I love hearing, you know, I tell people, you know, they're, they're like, oh man, working from home. How do you, I, I, I've been virtual for 16 years. So, you know, it's just like, it, it's one of those things you either, it either fits like a glove or it doesn't or somewhere in between. I don't know. Now, I remember reading four hour of work week when it came out, when I was still in law school and thinking this would be great. This will never happen for lawyers. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, <laughs> you know, essentially I'm doing kind of what he was getting at years ago, but obviously modified for 12 years later. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And it's, and that, that ultimately rolls out for everyone in a, in a different way. But you know, most people right now are saying, wait a second, what the heck does a lawyer who has a law firm have to do with e-learning? I mean, that's, that's the first thing. So the first thing that we need to tell everybody is 
you have a podcast called the Five Star Council Podcast. But why don't you give us some background? Who is John? You know, what is the podcast all about? And then I'll take us into why are we why are we in this conversation today? Oh, sure. So as a start, I am the sole proprietor of Strohmeyer Law PLLC in Houston, Texas. I guide my clients through the maze of state planning, tax, and probate. On the other side of it, and where the podcast started was, before I went to law school, I worked for the Four Seasons Hotels for four years, three of those years as the night manager of the Austin property. So I'd show up at uh, 11 o'clock at night, leave at eight or nine in the morning. And between those hours, I was the one in charge. So everything came down to me. I was you know, running a five-star hotel. Nothing, as, nothing funny <laughs> ever happens at night, ever. No, I, I, no, my no. Is everything goes smooth. Smooth all the time. That's, <laughs> I certainly never had to call a SWAT team or run to the top of the building or <laughs> anyway. Uh, but working in the hotel like that gave me a lot of experience on what client service is and what it meant in a business where there's no monopoly protection. You know, anybody could conceivably go out and be the Four Seasons or the Ritz or Best Western. You know, there's no, there's no real block to opening up a hotel. Or Airbnb. Or Airbnb. I mean, it, and so when I went to law school, I kind of took everything that I'd learned with me and it took a while to realize, well, law is a service business, but it's a very, it's a different kind of service than Four Seasons, Ritz, and even Disney. The problem is most of the people who take lessons on service are going to Four Seasons, Disney, and Ritz for what service should be. And the, the disconnect that I want people to start looking at is if you had a free Saturday and an unlimited budget, you're looking for you know, entertainment, pampering, or fun, something that looks like that. And that's where Disney Four Seasons and Ritz come in. You're going to go have a good time with your time off. Lawyers, and you know, it applies to doctors and accountants and engineers, people hire us for a service, but that service is to somehow move the needle for the client. You know, as an attorney, get your estate plan, clean up some, clean up a mess after somebody has passed, get you out of jail, adopt a child, get you a divorce get something done. Mm -hmm. This is not entertainment pampering or fun. This is, I have a project, I need it done. I'm outsourcing to you this result. And so what works for Disney doesn't work for lawyers because they can afford, you know, like as high end parts of the market, they can afford to spend more on the niceties, the wow moments, things like that, where it's, oh, we're gonna have the better drink menu. We're gonna spend more on presentation where a lawyer, when they're doing that, you're not necessarily going to see the same return. Like Disney can afford to, you know, have gold sprinkles on the chocolate on top of the presentation or, you know, when whatever, you know, when whatever comes out of the kitchen, <laughs> they're going to get uh, a multiple return mm -hmm. on that. You know, if they spend $1 on that extra chocolate design, they can probably charge three or five or seven or 15 for it. A lawyer with a drink menu, on the other hand, really can't charge for it. Nobody's going to say, oh, you know, John had the best drink menu. Let's go there and grab drinks from John. Mm. That it just doesn't flow. And that's where a lot of professionals, and it's not just professionals in terms of you have a degree, but, you know, even my barber would be the same thing. Like they've got a limited drink menu, but it's mostly provided by the coffee shop that's attached to them. Mm. So when I was getting my haircut earlier this week, I go next door and I pay for it. What, what I don't want is the, my barber raising my rates 10, 15, 20% to cover the cost of his special drink menu. When I can just go to next door and pick out exactly what I want. Mm. You know, I don't want him to be the procurement agent for me when I go get my haircut. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean don't do those nice things but it's harder to build in that cost and it's much easier to get distracted with, oh, you know, we need, we need a better drink menu for our clients who show up in the morning. We need an omelet menu because yeah. that's how we'll stand out. So you're, you're, you know, you are running this podcast. This is, you know, understanding why, I mean, and then that's really sort of putting the message out there that, that this is a service business that you're, that you're in and there's, there, there are ways to excel at it. Um, Something else that you've been investing in is a course. 
you are building e-learning. And one of the reasons why I, I wanted you to have you on the show and I think it's so fantastic is most of our audience thinks about e-learning. Like when I say, hey, e-learning, everybody thinks like me, hey, I'm, I'm a parent, I've got kids, they're in school, there's e-learning. Or I'm a student, I'm going to college, there's e-learning. Or maybe I'm even in a big corporation and you know I've got to do some like skill development, there's e-learning. But e-learning happens everywhere. There's sales training, there is client intake, there is customer service. You know, this is all teaching people how to do something. So who are you? you know, I mean, so we've talked about, you know, why you are building this, you know, like where, where you see the opportunity. Um, where does this get you with your client base? Like what, you know, what are you going to be able to deliver so that they can up their game? Right. So I've got two courses that are in the planning stages. And that was the nice thing too, is here I get, you know, free consulting from you on how to set up my courses. <laughs> But it's one for each. So one for the looking at one course for the law firm and looking at another different course for Five Star Council. And both of them are aimed at how can I get some information to people who want to help themselves access some of what I know. I can give them a lot of what I know, but they're miss, you know, the, the piece they're missing out on is I'm not going to be right there to say, turn this particular screw this way, but I can say, when you see this screw, you want to turn it this way. Mm. If I can give them a lot of the tools of what I see and how to take care of things, a lot of people, you know, it started with, let's think about this as the estate planning course. We do a lot of estate planning work in the firm. So if I can give the tools to the people who can probably do it themselves, you know, I charge for it. But if you'd rather take a stab at it yourself, let me tell you, here's, here's all the things you need to do. If you just go to LegalZoom, you can get documents. I'm not going, I don't want to review them. I'm not going to give them uh, my form documents, but I can point them to places where the state of Texas specifically will say, here are documents you can take and use. Mm -hmm. And it's then, here's my procedure. Here's my process for going through of, like, we want to outline Here's where your assets are. We need to make sure we've listed everything. We want to figure out what your threats are. You know, mm -hmm. It's not just you dying and there being assets everywhere. We need to find out where those things are now and have a good list of them because when you die, somebody's going to have to pick up these pieces and it's much better, you know, think of it as a puzzle. If all the pieces are in the box and there's a picture on top, it's a lot easier to complete <laughs> the puzzle than if there's no picture yeah, and the pieces the best, are every one of the best analogies and one of the best arguments for wills, estate planning, whatever that I've ever heard. Yeah, like get that, get the actual pieces all in the puzzle box because you're going to have to put the puzzle together no matter what. I'm going to write that down because every time, <laughs> every time I describe it, you know, it's it's always trying to find the better words and you know the the work that we do with clients. I've been doing this for over a decade as a lawyer. I've learned how to describe things but there's always some new wrinkle to it. We've added one new page to what we call our homework that we send to clients just to say, all right, when you're making medical decisions, here's the continuum because I found myself saying the same things over and over. And so the course is, here are the things that I say over and over. Mm -hmm. You can take this and do it yourself. But for the clients who were coming in and paying for us to do the work for them directly, it's going to be, just kind of a backup to them. Like we'll give you free access to the course because if you get bored, you can't sleep or you just have a question in the middle of the night, you can go back into the course and it's, here's where I'm explaining it and doing it in a more regular and systematized way than if you were to go check our YouTube channel, I'm giving away answers, but those are specific answers in the context of, here's a question mm. you may have versus here's how you plan the estate. And so kind of thinking of it that way, the YouTube channel is here are specific questions that people have versus the course. We're not just scraping everything off of YouTube, re-editing it and putting it in. We're going to record the course as a course with one, you know, me wearing one outfit <laughs> that of different lighting and you know, like, oh, John changed locations for some reason for this video. You know, it really is meant to be you're paying for a course, let's set it up as a discrete thing where you don't feel like all I did was take the previous content and mash it around and try and fool you. 
Right, exactly. What, the, there's a couple of things in there that I love. One is the realization that you're not giving away your expertise by building the course, right? Like, I don't think you're putting your firm, your legal practice in any danger at all by saying, hey, look, I'm going to, you know, here's a one, you know, either you pay a fee and here's a one-time opportunity or you're already a client and I'm going to also provide this so you don't have to pay me my hourly rate every time you call me um, because it's curation, right? It is saying, look, recognition that we're all in this ocean of information and I'm going to, show, I'm going to, you know, they trust you, they trust your firm and you're saying, look, this is our view. This is our process. You know, you're buying into it. And so we're going to try to make it as easy as possible at the end of the day. Exactly. Uh, I'm trying to teach people in the estate planning side. This is how we would do it. If you came into the office, you're looking for something that's not, you know, full freight, traditional legal services. And even though, you know, my lowest price plan still includes me doing doing some of the work and kind of guiding you through it. If I can guide you through it and then turn you loose to say, look, if you'd like to draft these yourself, there are plenty of options that, mm -hmm. you know, the documents really aren't the most valuable piece. It's me sitting there and saying, all right, here are the options that you should be looking at for your case. I can spell out this is why we would use something other than a will or a trust. I mean, I had a client who I'm talking to tomorrow and they want to make some gifts when one of the two spouses dies. I looked at that and I'm still happy to talk to my client tomorrow, but my recommendation is going to be, we're not going to change any of the documents. We're just going to go talk to the bank and basically make them do the work for mm. you. Mm. And, you know, basically save my client the time of me doing anything like here, it's almost a freebie. They will think better of me for having the 15 minute call. I get to talk to them again, but that's kind of part of the course of here are things that you're not thinking about. It doesn't hurt me to mm -hmm. just tell you, mm -hmm. you know, you do enough searching online, you would have found this answer anyway, but the course is the way where I can, as you said, curate the knowledge. So it's all in one place. Exactly. I love it. I love it. And I, I also just to, to, to further compound the thought behind that as well is that I love that you're like, look, Texas has all these documents for, for you know, many of these pieces that you take care of or you, that you, you know, people hire you to do. Um, I was, I've always, I've always been surprised uh, when I, you know, people say, oh, how do you do this? Or how do you, how do I set up a company? I'm like, look, you know, in today's universe, you can find pretty much anything that you want. It's just you're putting in the time, the effort, the energy, the everything, you know, to, to, to you know, thread the needle, whatever, you know, connect the dots and all that stuff and then thread the needle, right? right. Um, and so, yeah, so, so putting together this course, it, it really actually adds value, credibility, and, you know, uh, it, it reduces a lot of the friction to get you to those places where it's like, look, here's where I'm really going to add value. You've got a special twist that we need to do in this estate plan. Here's where we're going to do, or you know, you if you you know maybe you have to do multiple people in a family, you know that that's what you're gonna, that kind of thing, right? And then you're going right. to find here's the four hour work we kind of circle back is that some people are like, look, it's great, it's all out there. I still want you to do it because I'm just going to pay you because I don't want to deal with it, you know? Right, and that's ultimately where the people who come to us want it done for them. They mm -hmm. want the you know they want the crank turned for them. They just they have more money than time. Mm -hmm it would be easier and better for me to do the work. So we do. And what, what we're looking at is also, this is not a course for everybody. The high-end tax work that I do for some clients, we're not going to put in the course. I will explain, here's what the estate tax is. Here's what the gift tax is. Here's the five minutes you need to have in your head. And here is when you need to not be, here's when you Definitely price out of, the, out of the course. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know, if you've got more than $3 million, you need to think about not using a course because really you've got enough to where you should be thinking about it and you've got enough on the line. You probably want to make sure it's done right. Mm. But for the families that are, you know, I've got a 401k, we own the house and a car and there's maybe 20 grand in the bank, bank account, you know, good news and bad news. You may not need the full freight of an estate plan right, right. in or having it delivered by an attorney. That's okay. You know, there's plenty of more complicated work that I'm better suited for than, you know, frankly, the, the folks who can get by with a, you know, less attorney involved plan. Fantastic. So now take us to the, like, just sort of unfold the course for us. So you, 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 there's a great reason why you're doing this. 
you right. have a, a client base and you, you know, you've got a real great value proposition here. You're not an educator. Um, right. You're also not an ed tech professional. You're not an e-learning expert. I, I'm, I'm assuming none of these labels apply to you. No. You know, kind of, I, I want to hear the story of how did you decide on a platform? How did you decide on a, you know, did you outline it and then, you know, build the content and, you know, you, now you're starting to put it into a platform. Um, who's going to build it? Like all of these things, like where are the, oh crap, I didn't realize this was so much work along the way or what? Right. Um, constantly, it seems like, oh, and so the course for the, for the law firm really stems from how we set up our representations for estate planning. Uh, we start with a two hour, what is normally a two hour meeting for clients where we just talk through everything. And at the end of that, you know, it's kind of like a doctor's appointment. I'm poking and prodding, trying to find out what's going on with this family so that at the end I can say, this is what you need. And we do flat fee pricing. And the point is I've got a few different levels of service where I can say, this is all you need, or you need this, or you need that. It's not uh, I think you need a will and a trust or whatever. It's we've talked through this. We've come up with the pain points that your family is going to face. So really, it's following the script on that. It's like, all right, well, I know that at the beginning of this, we're going to talk about what your goals are, what you think you're worried about, and how we can deal with that. So mm -hmm. that means if I'm going to be on the other side of this, I've got to explain. I've got to list out pretty much all of the risks that I can see, and then probably have some way of saying, look, you know, if you think your risk is children coming in and being ungrateful, this is where you, you know, go to video seven or uh, however we'll set it up. We're going to end up, I think, using Kartra as the back end for the course. Hey, just we, have all we, we use Kartra for the eLearning Step Summit. We can talk about well, that too. <laughs> well, look at that. It, um, I did a lot of research, asked people who had set up courses. I think I may have even asked you in the forum that we're a part of, or maybe you had responded. But I just got enough recommendations on that. And we've been using that for the marketing for the law firm. And that's the nice thing. You know, I, I have my podcast on client service issues and I'm doing the law firm stuff, but we're basically having each one feed the other. You know, we learned something on how we deliver the podcast that helps for the law firm marketing stuff. The, the course, we're going to get one done first and then do the course for client service where walking people through, this is how you can evaluate things. This is what you need to think about. And so this is how you can improve client service in your own law firm with the idea of, if we've got this, then it's easier to you know, get people who are more interested, need more help. We can bring them back in uh, for private consulting on that. Mm. So what's the biggest surprise, you know, as you've been building this out, other than obviously it's a ton of work. Is it, <laughs> is it, is it, wow, there's just so, you know, like there's so many rabbit holes to go down. You know, I need, I actually need three courses or five courses. Um, you know, what, what's the, you know, what's the biggest aha moment? Uh, the, the first and the biggest has been, oh my gosh, this is so much work. And, <laughs> sure. you know, even thinking about it as if it's, only a two hour course. And I think that is very, like a very low ball estimate for the client service one, for the estate planning one. You know, I said it's a two hour meeting, but I've got to address things that I, you know, normally there are things like, oh, we don't need to talk about this. But that still means I need to talk about that in the context of the course. And so that has been just kind of organizing and making sure we've got all the questions. I know this is, you know, the lawyer brain says it's got to be perfect right out the gate. Oh, yeah. I, that was, that's, the, you've already stole my next question. It's like, how much of a perfectionist are you? Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, my, my wife, because she works around just outside of the frame of the video, is tired of hearing me say, don't make the perfect the enemy of the good. And that's something I've got to fight with too. <laughs> of, I'll, you know, the first dozen or whatever people who have, who sign up for the course, we'll probably end up having a Calendly link or something like that where it's, were there any questions you didn't have or didn't get answered or anything you thought we missed? Go ask them. What do, what do you think we missed? What didn't you understand? Because we can come back and uh, address that. So that was the easy one. The one that's coming back or it's kind of the unintentional stumbling block 
was not getting wrapped up again in the perfection, but you know, before we got started, I, I cleaned up my office a little bit. I probably don't need to worry too much about the video setting, you know, mm-hmm. just, I can have some simple slides with simple text that say, mm-hmm. do this, this, and this, and it can be me in the corner. And that's probably going to be enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're nodding in that. Great. That's more than enough. You know, I'll just, I'll line out all the topics for the course and then just have the few bullet point slides and I'll just talk through it and, you know, yeah, don't overcomplicate it. And that's a, I'm glad you put that on the table because I think so many people get paralyzed by that where they're like, oh no, I'm going to have to perform. I'm going to be on a stage. And then, you know, I'm going to have to go really deep and really, you know, get super, you know, into the weeds about each of the points I want to make. Whereas in this particular case, you know, this is a, I don't want to say high level because that's not the right term, but it's, this is sort of, this is a replacement for those, that two hour meeting or whatever. And so it's, look, let's cover the, 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 the key points to give people a surety, you know, to, you know, cement your credibility, but also to answer some frequently asked questions and whatnot. So like you just said, don't overcomplicate it. Right. right. And right. that is going to be sufficient. And here's the thing, it gets you to version 1.0 a lot faster. Right. And then okay, version, you know, 1.5 will come out in six months and version 2.0 maybe, or maybe it's an annual release really, hey, we've updated this with all of the things that we learned, you know, Shazam. Right, and just having it out there, we'll probably end up giving it away to a few folks just for free of, please, just try this. Um, We want a few people to go through this. Does it work? And as much as, you know, my family loves me, they probably aren't going to be willing to sit through it. But if we get a few people you know, like clients where we say, well, look, we may be out of your price range. We've got this offering where you might be able to do it yourself. Are you interested? We'll probably get a few folks who are interested in that. That's fantastic. Uh, So when you, when you, um, when you made the decision to build the course, what was your first move? Was it to sort of start Googling, you know, like how to build a, you know, a course or was it, did you go out, you know, as you said, we're a part of the same sort of a a larger network of individuals who are in sort of the the digital universe, the digital marketing universe. Like, where did you go for those resources? Where where are you looking for support for yourself? I mean, one of my, one of my superpowers is I love to research. So just going down the rabbit holes of how do you do this? How do you set it up? I, there, I got some book on how to set up the course And I don't remember the name of it right now, or just globally how to set up the course. It's like, this isn't bad, but I feel like I've already seen a lot of this already. Mm. So good news and bad news. I saw things that I needed. The bad news is what next, you know, because I've, I've taken courses. I'm in some right now, plus, you know, digital learning for continuing legal education. How can I do things? A lot of it is, all right, well, these have been my pain points. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, just one course I've been in. There are, I think, 48 different videos. Mm -hmm. The problem is you don't, you know, when you get the list of them, none of them indicate how long each one is. Like you have to go into each individual unit. And that's just kind of a pain to not even know at the outset, this is how many hours I need to set aside. Thankfully, at least you can speed it up. So it's like 1.25 or one and a half speed to blow through a lot, a lot of the lessons more quickly, but even still like just knowing what you're on the hook for in, in terms of a time commitment. Sure. Absolutely. Um, what's your anticipated, like, how are you going to release this? You said that you're going to trickle it out to some clients, get some feedback and those, you know, and those kinds of things. Does it then, become a part of your just sort of standard service offering it's like hey look you bought this package and by the way here comes a course with it or is this is this going to be something that you're marketing exclusively on its own as well like it becomes its own it's another revenue stream for for the for the firm um i anticipate that the law firm one becomes its own uh its own revenue stream where we're taking people who are kind of marginal clients for us like they wouldn't be a full qualified lead but we may say, look, we may be out of your price range, but this might get you what you need. And then the, if at the end of it, you'd like us to do things, you know, we'll give, gift certificate, apply whatever you paid mm. towards full service down the line. 
and make it kind of easy for them of they're not going to be paying twice for something. If you got it, we'll just give, you know, we'll happily, happily uh, apply it to whatever you get with us later on. Is this, a, have you talked to maybe uh, a lawyers association, bar association in, in the Houston area or greater Texas and say, Hey, look, I'm, I'm building this thing out and it could be a resource for you all. Is that even a thought? Um, lawyers, you may not have noticed lawyers are slow to move. <laughs> And this, I mean, it's the sort of thing that I, I mean, I've gone around looking for e-courses on estate planning and, you know, not really worried about anybody uh, here listening to this or any, anywhere else setting something up because I just couldn't find anything. Right. The closest it came was you can go to LegalZoom and they've got their articles and NOLO has their stuff. But then all of the e-courses on this were teaching other lawyers and paralegals how to do this and uh, financial advisors. Nobody, as far as I can tell right now, is walking you through, this is how you should do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, liability ethics wise for me, this really is a, it's like buying a book on estate planning. You know, here it is. If you would like to do this, this is how you do it. But the legal liability for me when it's just a book is, well, it's just a book. I love it's, that. It's not specific legal advice. And I'm telling you, here are my tricks. Right. There you go. What's, um, so to, so to walk me through the, you know, we're, we're, we're recording this in February, top of February, 2021. What's the, what's the release date? What's the rollout? When should we check back in with you to say, how's it going? How are you knocking it out of the park? Um, right now, you know, here we are halfway through quarter, almost halfway through quarter one. Oh my God. How did that happen? <laughs> I asked myself that two days ago too. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> right. And so we have a few projects that we, you know, there's always too many projects. The one, the ones we're working on right now will take us through the end of the quarter. So I am hoping that it's going to be like, it's a quarter two project, but I think it's an easily doable quarter two project because even if it takes me two days to record it mm. I can block off that time but I'm going to look at that at the beginning you know I've got a mid-quarter break for myself in a in two weeks where I'll be able to kind of reassess look at where we are where are we going and hopefully start to put down and say all right the quarter one projects those are either on track, we're going to be done early or not. And then just uh, look for the time to have them right. You know, let's, let's put in the, the calendar time to get those signed or get those signed, get those filmed. Whatever nice. I'm talking about. And then once you get those filmed um, again, so are you using a team of people or is this, you know, John's doing it all himself. Is it, you know, are, are, have you outsourced any of this to other people? Like, video editors and then somebody's going to put the actual course together and you got like a tech team or whatever? Um, I have a few folks who work for me at the law firm. So my my marketing guy, my podcast producer does video editing. He's one of his projects right now is the video onboarding for clients. Mm. So we're walking through video and he's doing the editing, cutting it up so that clients can, they can make the video call in the middle of the night and start getting onboarded through that process. Nobody has to do anything. We just, you know, once we've filmed it, the course, I mean, of course, it'll be, you know, 10 little videos with some logic programmed into it. So if you answer these questions, you go down this other trail, right. or if you answer the questions differently, you'll go down a different trail and end up with a recommendation of like, oh, we need to set up your first session. This is what it looks like. The next link will be where you schedule it. And the link after that will be where you pay for it. And if we can start making that automated, we then layer in the, oh, you may want the course so we can have the diversion link to a Kartra registration. And like, here's your course page. Mm -hmm. John, this has been a great conversation. Um, I love talking with people who are not, you know, who are outside your sort of traditional, you know, education universe, because 
we didn't even get into the topics of, you know, how do you design this? You know, what is, you know, what does the course actually look like? You know, how do you create actionable items so that the, you know, you've got continuity? Are you going to even worry about course completion rates or those kinds of things? Um, but, you know, it's just another side of the e-learning universe that we don't get to talk about very often. And I appreciate you kind of opening the kimono literally and sort of just laying it on, laying it on the table there. Yeah. You know, the, the beginner's enthusiasm of, oh, you know, what, what could go wrong? <laughs> well, awesome. I'm going to check in back in with you, you know, later in the year. Um, but I wish you all the Great. luck. Please do. And thanks for being on the podcast today. Of course. Thank you, Steve. Thanks again for tuning into today's episode of the e-learning podcast. If you like what you've learned uh, today in this episode, I encourage you to either follow us or subscribe to us on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. And please do share this episode with one or two of your colleagues or friends. Also, I just want to remind you that you can level up your online learning game with all of the information that's available at the eLearning Success Summit. You can get your free ticket at eLearningSuccessSummit.com. And finally, you can also stay up to date on everything that's important, all the news and the resources for e-learning professionals at lmspulse.com. Get our free newsletter by just going to lmspulse.com today. Thanks again.